Time flies when you're having fun, and it's week 15 of what happened on my universe mode! And as always, we started with Raw, which was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, beginning with a match between John Cena and Kane, with the winner taking on Bray Wyatt at the main SummerSlam in another week's time. The match began back and forth, as you would expect with such a big prize on offer. But eventually, John Cena would take control with that Luthez press. Hit a superplex, the five knuckle shuffle, and then finish him with the AA to get his pay per view match at SummerSlam. It's been a while since we saw the Divas champion, Brie Bella, defend her title, so she took on Natalia on Raw with that title on the line. Natalia had the early going in this match, hitting a few moves before Brie Bella was able to finally get something back with a suplex. They traded moves back and forth again, and after this drop kick, Natalia thought she had it. She didn't. Brie Bella reversed her next move and hit a Bella Buster to win and retain the Divas title. Ryback wasn't waiting around for Seth Rollins in their Falls Count Anywhere match and attacked him from behind on the ramp. He then dismantled Seth Rollins, destroying him, doing several moves, hitting him with weapons, eventually powerbombing him through the announce table. But Seth Rollins showed his resiliency by kicking out a two, then hitting the curb stomp. Ryback though, he didn't even hit with one move so he kicked out a two as well before Seth Rollins knocked him into the crowd somehow. After they got back into the crowd, a frustrated Ryback smacked Seth Rollins down with a baseball bat several times and this held him down for the free count. Randy Orton must have watched Ryback earlier. He had the same idea, taking out Roman Reigns on the ramp before their submission match. You know, because it's universe mode. Randy Orton didn't make the same mistakes Ryback did though. He took out Roman Reigns properly, eventually making him tap to a half crab after various signatures and finishes. Post match, Randy Orton gave a few more shots to Roman Reigns with a chair. And onto our main event, as Brock Lesnar took on Daniel Bryan. But Daniel Bryan wasn't waiting around, and he ran straight to the ring, jumping on Brock Lesnar. After jumping on Brock Lesnar, Daniel Bryan resorted to kicking him in the face and chest a lot. Now, it didn't keep Brock Lesnar down, he managed to get a few hits in, but Daniel Bryan thought he had him with this DDT on the apron. He didn't. This kind of woke up Brock Lesnar, woke up the beast inside him. And he went and hit Daniel Bryan with a lot of moves, and in fact, I think he took him to Suplex City. Daniel Bryan did try and reverse out of these moves with that arm DDT type maneuver there but it wasn't stopping the freight train that was Brock Lesnar a triple powerbomb and an F5 later and Brock Lesnar was victorious and afterwards he beat him down a bit more just to show some dominance I guess now main event was in Seattle Washington and we started with Santino Marella taking on Kevin Nash both men were defeated at SummerSlam Classic in, well, controversial circumstances, but Kevin Nash was the more pissed off it would seem, and he, after getting hit by a couple of moves, didn't let Santino get anything again, and Jackknife powerbombed him down for the win. In the second match, CM Punk and Lex Luger teamed up once again to take on Mr. Perfect and Ric Flair, the men that beat Santino and Kevin Nash. The match began rather open with both teams getting regular tags and big moves on each other. And you wouldn't have thought that it was just CM Punk and Lex Luger that were the regular tag team, as Perfect and Flair teamed very well, considering they were feuding like two months ago anyway. Flair and Perfect may have been teaming well, but unfortunately for them it wasn't enough to beat Chicago's finest, as Lex Luger hit a pile driver and CM Punk hit the go to sleep to give them the victory. Booker T became the new European champion at SummerSlam when he stole the pin from Stone Cold Steve Austin as he was hitting a stunner on Raven. Stone Cold wanted a bit of revenge, so they had a Fool's Count Anywhere match. And Stone Cold didn't really let Booker T do anything. He just 
pulverised him completely, putting him through a table and hitting a stunner. The new European champion though kicked out of the stunner. So Stone Cold hit another stunner, and he stayed down this time. The other man that was in that European title four-way match, Chris Jericho, took on Shawn Michaels in a random submission match, in which Shawn Michaels hit a shooting star friggin' press. Well, we didn't hit it because Jericho got his knees up, but still, what the fuck? So yeah, a submission match, and Shawn Michaels was the first one to get one. He put on a figure four leg lock, which didn't get a tap out. Chris Jericho hit a couple of moves before Shawn Michaels hit a sweet chin music, and locked on another figure four leg lock. But Jericho held firm and didn't tap out again. Jericho managed to get his signatures up and got a Wolves of Jericho himself. But Shawn Michaels was resilient enough to not tap as well. Until he hit a code breaker and then snapped on the Wolves of Jericho again. This time he held it in for like forever. So Shawn Michaels had to tap out. On to the main event. Main event and what a main event again. Or it would have been if Triple H didn't get involved. As the Ultimate Warrior took on The Undertaker. And Triple H, well, he piled drove and threw The Undertaker into the steps before Ultimate Warrior could really do anything. Didn't stop The Undertaker, who hit a couple more moves anyway. Until The Ultimate Warrior finally took control, beat The Undertaker down, hit the Gorilla Press and then the splash to the back to take the main event win. Post-match, Triple H took out both men, meaning he used the Ultimate Warrior as a pawn in his game. Moving on, it was time for the future, and the future was hailing from Chicago, Illinois for NXT. We opened with a match between two people who were on a bit of a losing streak as Adam Rose took on Bo Dallas in a wide open match. Despite the match being wide open, unfortunately for Adam Rose, it was Bo Dallas that got the win, hitting this double underhook DDT, busting him open in the process. Bo Dallas celebrated like he meant it. Adrian Neville took on Hideo Itami in the second match on NXT, and it was for the number one contendership, as next week the winner of this match takes on Finn Balor for the NXT title. Much like the last match, this was also wide open, with good reason to be as the title shot was on the line, and we thought it was over when Adrian Neville hit this reverse Hurricane Rana. But two swift, high-flying moves from Hideo Tommy gave him the pinfall win, and he will take on his mate, Finn Balor, next week. Now the Ascension took on Kalisto and a returning Tyson Kidd in a tag team match. Of course, this was a tag match only in name, as Tyson Kidd didn't even get tagged in, as the Ascension gave Kalisto the beating of his life, finishing it with the fall of man. The Ascension victorious. And so onwards we go to the hardcore title match, as Kevin Steen came out to take on Bam Bam Bigelow. However, Bam Bam got attacked by Finley on the way in, meaning Kevin Steen had a bit of a head start. Steen tried to make the head start count with a swanton bomb and a drop kick before Bam Bam did get a bulldog. It wasn't much though, as Kevin Steen was able to throw him out and hit him with that over the top rope sent on. A ladder shot on an F5 gave Steen the easy win to retain the hardcore title. As we move on to main event time, and JBL was taking on Mojo Rowley, getting some revenge in for the random attack last week. Another wide open match this one. Both men hitting big moves like that top rope stunner but it wasn't enough and JBL was bending over backwards to try and get the win himself. Again both men hit big moves but when Mojo tried to go to the top rope it was a mistake and it allowed JBL to hit the clothesline from hell to take the win. Post match he obviously must have hit Mojo Rawley really hard with that clothesline from hell because he was being stretched out. However, JPL didn't want to let him get stretched out and took him out, throwing him off the stretcher and beating him down. Now on to SmackDown, which was in San Diego, California, and we started with a rematch. And Cesaro looked to get his win back from Justin Gabriel. Just like most of NXT, we had another open match on our hands, but once we went to the outside, Cesaro hit a German suplex and took over, hitting his jumping European uppercut, and then 
throwing him into a giant swing to take the victory. And Cesaro was fucking delighted, as you can tell. Tag team action now as Damien Sandow teamed up with Bad News Barrett to take on the Usos. These two teams went on at two for now, however Bad News Barrett didn't get too much time in the ring. He did get tagged in though after Damien Sandow hit this Russian leg sweep and he did hit a move but that was about it. A super kick later and he was getting smashed a few times with knee drops and headbutts. He tagged back into Sandow who hit his own knee drop but then Sandow was thrown into the corner and then the Usos did their thing slamming him down and hitting a big splash to take the tag team victory. Intercontinental Champion Dolph Ziggler made his way down to the ring to take on The Miz but The Miz was sneaky and snuck up behind him like a cunt and gave him a clothesline. He then hit a couple more clotheslines before elbow dropping him and hitting the skull crushing finale to take the cheaty win like a cunt. In the semi-final matchup, the Brotherhood teamed up once again after facing off last week to take on Big E and Kofi Kingston, the New Day. But there was a bit of dissension when it came to who was starting the match and Cody decided it was him but unfortunately for Cody he didn't hit many moves so he tagged into Goldust but Goldust got took advantage of straight away with Big E hitting a suplex on the back before Kofi Kingston hitting lots of other moves on the inside Goldust did manage to get the hot tag though as Cody managed to get a few moves for his team like this Bulldog and this reversal he then hit a slam before tagging back into Goldust but Goldust was still tired and after a double back body drop Kofi hit the SOS for the victory but Kofi wasn't done tonight he still had another match against Alberto Del Rio as Big Show took a seat on commentary as it happens Big Show didn't have much to say but he didn't need to as the match said it for itself German suplexes and Zaguri's drop kicks Punt kicks, moon salts, throws here, there, and everywhere. It was wide open, and considering Kofi Kingston already had a match, it was surprising that he could manage it all. Perhaps even more surprising was the fact that after hitting this trouble in paradise, he got the victory. He's on a roll. A few questions for the week. Why did Randy Orton copy Ryback's attack from behind? Will Daniel Bryan be able to stop the beast train? How will the Ultimate Warrior react to being a pawn in the game's game? Did JBL take it too far with this attack? And why is The Miz such a cunt? Find out all this and more next time on What Happened on My Universe Mode. Like and subscribe.